our final session for today, I'm going to invite Al Briggs to come up. And let me introduce you to Al. Al has been a university lecturer and a learning designer for many years. Earlier this year, he joined the Adobe Education team as a strategy development manager for higher education. Al is going to be hosting, he's going to be the host of our Curly Questions segment, and uh, he will be introducing our esteemed panel members. So, Al, please give him a round of applause as he comes to stage. So the first question, and I'd like both Virginia and Juliet to be answering this, do you think relying on Gen AI for assignments compromises students' ability to develop critical thinking and creativity? I think I might, so oh, you're probably okay. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, okay. that's probably the feedback okay. came from. Um, Do you want to go first? Okay. I would have to say that I think it would be very easy to say that it's going to cause issues for students having a negative impact on their uh, critical thinking. However, when we ask our students to do any form of assessment, if a machine can do it for them, that's not the right piece of assessment. The, the tool should be something that they can use to generate an idea, and then it might produce something, but they need to have the subject knowledge, the content knowledge, to be able to ascertain whether or not it's valid or whether it's nuanced enough. And I think that when it comes down to it, it's down to, it really is down to us because we're teaching them how to use the technology in an ethical way to be able to demonstrate their understanding. And if they're not thinking, it's going to be evident in their, in their outcomes. So I think we're actually, if we frame the task effectively, we're getting them to use their critical thinking, their analysis. And I actually don't see that it necessarily has to be an, a bad thing. What do you think? Very, very similar thoughts. Uh, I think the main thing is scaffolding in that ethical thinking and getting them to understand that, okay, yes, whilst you may be able to get a machine to write an essay for you, is that actually benefiting you and what can you learn from that? And being able to teach them the skills of discernment and critical thinking, mm -hmm. problem solving, even using it as if within an art subject, as we found out today, I am no artist, wish I was, but using generative AI as a jumping off point of, okay, you may not be able to think of how to approach this visual arts assessment, but this gives you an idea of where to go. Absolutely. And same thing with writing essays or an independent research task. It can, it's a great tool and teaching them the values to understand that it is just a tool and they can use it to benefit themselves rather than just claim it's their own work. Absolutely. Brilliant. Yeah. And I think that, that really does feed into that idea that, that is across all levels of education now around authentic assessment. Where yeah. you know, we've, we've actually got a situation where the issues that are being faced in K-12 are the same as the issues being faced in, in, in university with this sort of technology. So. Excellent, thank you. If we move down the line to Rob and Mark, in your opinion, what is the most important thing, so no pressure, the most important <laughs> thing teachers need to know about the safe and ethical use of AI in the classroom? And if there's more than one, that's okay too. Well, in thinking about that, uh, um, self-informing really above everything else and when you look at the the gamut of teachers that we've we've got in the education system it is those who self-inform but also i think pay attention to the other things and, and this is straight out of pip's playbook from her talk before duty of care um, and uh, code of conduct all of those things that we already know about so those guardrails are already there and if we apply them al uh, 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 along with uh, self-informing, they're the key ingredients, I think. It's, it's interesting because we didn't actually uh, talk before this, no. but my, my, uh, um, my answer is very similar in, in more or less just have a go. Um, uh, the, the technology's as bad as it's ever, ever going to be right now. Absolutely. Uh, and if we get on, the, get on the bus right now and learn as we go, um, both as teachers, students, as a society, as a world, um, uh, then that's the best chance we've got to using it well um, and using it in creative and interesting ways. I think right. also the thing about that is, is that's what you do in the real world. That's right. So mm. it's just using a skill and yep. developing a skill. Yeah. And mm. I think, you, I mean, you're absolutely right. It, what you said is, is what I keep coming back to, mm. which is this technology mm. is at its worst right now. Yes. It's yeah. only getting better, but yeah. it's getting better so, so rapidly. 
um, you know, at a scale that I don't think we've had to face before in education. Mm. So, yeah, exciting times ahead. Mm. So, to, to the doctors. <laughs> Actually, before we answer, let's get them to think. What do you think about this question? Put your hand up if you worry that Gen AI might replace teachers in the future. Okay, any couple. Hands up if you don't worry at all. Okay. I just, I think if we stay the same as we are now, then yes, we might be replaced. But if we change who we are and we we adapt as well, then no, we'll never be replaced because it's about relationships. Mm -hmm. But if we try and be the teachers we are today, then I think yeah, absolutely we'll be replaced. Mm -hmm. I think if you're talking about teachers as delivering content, mm. then that's something a machine can do. Absolutely. But we are also inspirers, we are nurturers, we are carers, and that's not, and that's not something. <laughs> 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 that's not something. <laughs> okay. Can I go first? Sure, go ahead. Right, so, um, I agree. I think, well, actually, I think that we need teachers more than ever now in yeah. light of Gen AI because we need to help support students to develop their critical thinking. We need to help them develop their um, data literacy skills as well. We need to teach them how to use um, AI in meaningful and ethical ways. Um, and to be users of AI, creators using AI rather than just passive consumers. But I think that there's always going to be a human element in teaching students. Um, so AI, yet yeah, we've heard it's a tool. Um, but, you know, we really need teachers to guide and support and to inspire because, as we've heard, learners are different. And learning is not on a continuum. It goes in peaks and troughs and teachers Pre-service teachers are, you know, trained to develop a range of strategies um, so that they can work with lots of diverse learners and work out what's right for them at that point in time for their learning. So I'm not worried. However, I do think what I'm worried about is that um, we're going to have to, as teachers, change our practices and we're going to have to find out different ways of how students can demonstrate their learning and their mm. thinking, because we know learning is a consequence of thinking, so how are we making our students think? And those assessments that we're setting, if they're not bringing in thinking skills, then we need to get rid of them. Yeah. So, so I agree with a lot of this, but my answer to the question is somewhat, but for a slightly different reason. Look, I think we've been answering this question since the Industrial Revolution, since yes. any new piece of technology has come along. Um, I work in autonomous robotics, by the way, and I've got a team of these nails that play soccer, so I'm oh, curious all right. to talk to you later. <laughs> um, and I always get asked, when are robots going to take over the world? Hopefully never. Um, but it's the same question, right? Because it's this question of where do we see ourselves in this new technology coming? There's no question that AI, generative AI, but AI since the 1970s has changed the way we do things. AI has revolutionised social media when, it can, when recommender systems come along, as an example. And it's going to change how education looks. So we have to say, yes, some roles are going to change. Some roles might disappear. New roles will be invented. I am teaching students technology that didn't exist when I went to university. And now I'm teaching them how to do this. So my question is, the reason I say somewhat is precisely what's being talked about here. To me, education is a deeply human endeavour. The way I train an AI model is not the same way I teach a human being. And to me, the answer is that deeply human connection of how we work with the student, how we build that education experience, how we develop and inspire the students, to use one of your words, to learn and to explore. What I worry about is whether we lose sight of that in our education institutions when, in some ways, getting the degree is what a lot of our students care about. Mm. And that's, that's my worry, is that we lose sight of us being a human endeavour. That's, yes, I think they're wonderful answers. Um, back to the top, and I've got more that I'd love to ask, but I've, I've got a script to stick to, so I promise I will, I will, I will stick to the script. Virginia and Juliet, how do you envision using Gen AI to enhance student learning and engagement in the future, and what challenges do you anticipate? Do 
Can I pass? Okay. Um, what I found is, particularly with my divergent learners and the ones who are very reluctant to demonstrate their understanding, um, you know, the fear of the blank page. Generative AI gives them that step into a space. You cannot edit something if it doesn't exist. If it means that the student puts a prompt in to get a small introductory paragraph, but it gets them thinking, then it gives them the opportunity then to respond to that generated element and allow their nuanced voice to come through. But if they give you a blank page, if, if you look at a blank page and they, they, they stall, there's nowhere to go. So I think when it comes to um, the learning engagement, I know in terms of my own students, the students who struggle the most are the ones who are embracing it the most because I, they're able to use immersive reader, they can use voice to uh, text, they can use you know, voice to animate, they can use a range of different tools, their faces aren't seen but they are able to share their understanding. The challenge is actually, I think the challenge is more, as I said before, we, have, we domesticate what we use. We domesticate the technology we use. We don't, we, we, ha we haven't got time. But that small investment of play to find out what's going on and how to access and use those, the tools that are available to us allow um, us to learn about productive failure. And we need to then demonstrate that for students so they learn productive failure. Because unless you don't get things right the first time, you really don't learn. You need to see what doesn't work to then appreciate what does. Isn't it a perfect time with generative AI to, to be producing productive and, failures? And they learn, they learn about um, uh, redefining things yep. and refining yeah. things. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we were having a really great conversation about that before because one of the things I've really struggled with on my placements is when I get a piece of work back from a student and they've done amazingly, they've shown excellent growth and then they've gotten to a question that they're unsure of and the rest of it is blank because that mm. one question has absolutely thrown off their confidence. So building that resilience through AI, I believe, could be something absolutely brilliant, giving them those ideas to jump off with. Mm -hmm. I think the main problem I've got with it is just those students who do become a little bit complacent. They go, oh, I do love this. I don't want to change this. Yes. And getting them to understand that it's not necessarily that you want to change it. It's getting them to go, OK, this is the product. What do I want to add to it? How can I change it for my understanding, rather than just, this is the product, this is what it is? It's also developing their critical analysis yeah, as well. Yeah, absolutely. Because they've got to make judgments and stand behind their judgments. Yep. Yeah, and that skill of discernment as well, mm. because I mean, I have it in my head where I would love to get them to do a chat GPT essay of a scientific topic of their choice, and then their own essay of what they've researched, what they've done, and then get them to go, okay, is this factually correct? Mm. What is this writing? And then taking those, okay, this is a really great sentence structure. This is a really great reference. And being able to incorporate it into their own work and actually understand, oh, okay, cool. AI doesn't always get it right because it's That's just right. like me. It's still learning. Yeah. So I think that would be a really great skill as well. And we, we are lifelong learners. Yeah. Mm. So, Unfortunately, yeah. we've got educators like yourselves who are going to go in and teach the students those skills. So mm. the robots won't replace us quite yet. No, I don't think so. Are you sure about that? <laughs> yeah, oh, so yeah uh, on behalf yeah, of Adobe, I can see that. That's true. Uh, Robin, Mark, with AI already influencing many industries, what would you say to critics who argue that schools are lagging in preparing students for an AI-driven world? <laughs> Apparently, I get to go first on this one. Um, <laughs> I actually, I would refute that. I think, um, like ChatGPT, uh, sort of um, thrust uh, generative AI into the. Uh, into the world in November 22, and uh, by January, or you know, um, the start of the school year, uh, in, certainly in Australia, and no doubt the Americans were dealing with it in real time, um, but we were dealing with it uh, that year, uh, running PDs, um, there's been so many conferences, so many events, so many panels, uh, so much discussion, uh, so many policies, uh, tweaked and thought about. Um, I don't think we're lagging. I think, um, you know, we're embracing it and it's an evolving beast. So you, you, you've just, um, uh, yeah, far from lagging, we're, we're, we're on board, I think, um, and, and, and doing what we can. Yeah. So, no. I think criti <laughs> the critics are wrong <laughs> if they're saying such things. Critics, they're not here today. That's fine. That's, that's okay. And uh, to dial it back down to simpler issues that we may face in the Territory, which are getting kids to actually turn up to school. 
to a very quick story. A, a teacher goes out to Amabiji, which is a small uh, remote school, Northern Territory, Western Australian border. She goes in there and she's been using Adobe Express and doing generative AI. And she was relay, relaying to me the story and she said, the kids called me a hacker. <laughs> and I thought, oh my goodness, what's going on? And what it is, because she was able to demonstrate to them how they could use generative, generative AI and all of the tools that, that they've got available to them, this computer suddenly had become this machine that she was doing incredible things to and they could do incredible things to. Totally had them engaged. So that hacker was a badge, at, at which now I'm telling everyone about it because I think, wow, normally it's not a good thing, but here is an example of kids turning up to school because this AI is bringing them into school and it may give them a job. Forget about jobs with AI, a job. A job, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So that's pretty uh, cool. Uh, yeah, absolutely. That's a wonderful, wonderful yeah. observation, yeah. Um, Timothy and Temby, how important do you think it is for students to learn about Gen AI and how should schools incorporate this learning into the curriculum? There you go. Oh, me. Um, look, I'm biased, right? I work in AI, so yes, clearly the answer is yes. Is it important? But to me, the answer to this question has been discussed here already, what we've seen in the conference. Big picture, I think generative AI, more than any tool, certainly in my time, has shone a spotlight on just what is it that we are doing in education, right? Why do we exist? What is my, what is my purpose and role as an educator? And if it's about getting the marks, this is where generative AI is causing us problems, because in computing, can I take a question from first year programming, which is what I'm teaching at the moment, and get generative AI to write? Yes, I can. Um, why do I teach a student to do that? Because it's a fundamental skill they need to learn to do their future job. So is it important for students to know this? Absolutely, because it shines a spotlight to not just us, but on our students of why are they in the classroom? What are they here to learn? Where can generative AI help me from a creative point of view to generate ideas? And where does generative AI actively hurt my learning? Where should I not use it? Because doing so means I'm not developing my skill set, I'm not developing my future career potential as a university person, we talk about this, but even from, not even, including the primary and secondary level, where does it, why am I in the classroom? Where is it helping me? And where is it actively hurting me? That, to me, is why it's super important to understand the place of it. And what's missing? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I think it's also really important to um, learn about Gen AI. In terms of how it's already influencing our lives, um, how it's sometimes manipulating our lives, I think we need to understand how facial recognition works, how large language models work, um, where, you know, what are the benefits and limitations of, of Gen AI as well. I think um, having that understanding and being, I really like what Pip was saying about this is how I use the tools, being really open and having those um, conversations with students in every discipline. It's like, this discipline might use AI in this way. What do you think about that? Or do you think that there are some flaws using it in this particular way um, in this discipline? Or how does that actually relate to what you know? So I think um, teachers really need to talk about, it, be open about how they're using it, how they problem solve it, how they think about using it um, responsibly so that students can then make those decisions themselves. I think it also opens the conversation about bias. Yeah. And, you know, the different um, algorithms that are used. So it opens the conversation. And, you know, this generative AI has given you an outcome but now let's investigate what that outcome is saying and the, you know, the stereotypes that have been called on and where do you think the information came from? Yeah. So opening those discussions, uh, I think, is a really important thing, whether it's in primary school or secondary mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or higher. Or kindergarten. Or even kindergarten. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, I, I think, again, that's, that's the wonderful thing about this is that it is at all levels that Absolutely. we're asking these questions. It's not just one particular cohort. Everybody mm -hmm. is trying to deal with this, including educators, including senior leaders at universities, including everyone. You know, mm -hmm. that's why there are 25,000 different strategies and goals and aims and, you know, structures in place to go in and say, well, this is how it can be used. Maybe it's 
two lanes, or maybe it's yes, yeah, sometimes, sometimes it's not, sometimes it's a combination. It's a really, really interesting space. Um, that's it as far as the, the big questions go before we get yeah. into audience questions. Are there any from the audience? Oh, we've got hands up, this is good. Um, I've been thinking a fair bit about this, and I find that there's an incredibly complex um, matter when it comes to education. I guess the biggest questions that I would have as a VCE teacher, particularly for media, um, is what kind, how do we assess the kind of cognitive um, learning that the students are doing through um, generative AI? And how, as we as VCE teachers, um, how do we authenticate the work as their work? Because that's one of the criteria. For particularly for production work, I had to, uh, because, you know, particularly with media production work, they do have to produce their own work. And so last year, when I had a couple of students that it was quite clear that they were, there was AI generation going in there. The other factor is, is the other question I've got is that last year when AI was, you know, ChatGTP in particular was coming into the schools and the moral panics that was coming out of the Department of Education, and there was this blanket ban, as I always do, like with mobile phones, of banning um, AI in schools. And yet, we're getting these tools of using AI in the classroom. Where do we draw the line there? Can I just answer that brief, uh, uh, contribute to the answer? Um, one of the ways that I think we can do this is to have our students cre keep, create or keep a learning log. So, what I've been doing is using um, Adobe Express web page with my grade seven English class. And they're also writing in, in Teams, so in their OneNote. So they're in OneNote, whenever they're writing narratives, for every lesson, I got them to change the font so that I could see where, for that day, what editing changes they made. And the next day, they put a code up, they put the date, the, the color up. But I had a good record of how the students were working how they were editing, when they were editing. There were no great big swathes of you know, text in there that just appeared beautifully. Yes, it sometimes means going back into your history or into their history. But by teaching them to identify where they've used it and to be proud of the fact they've gone and had the initiative and then to talk about how they felt about and reflect on it, because I really think it's important that we draw attention to their metacognitions for them, that they learn how they learn, and then that informs how they use the tools. So it stops being something that they can cheat and, and you know, confuse and bamboozle the teacher who hasn't got a clue because we don't know these things theoretically. Um, it becomes something that is part of the conversation, and it's about accountability and about respect, and that's all part and parcel. And by having a learning log that they're constantly adding to, You've got a record, and you've got a record you can share with parents, which I think is another part of the conversation. Sorry, I'll, I'll shush. I think that reflection is really important. Yeah. Um, it's really tricky at VCA because they've got high stakes assessment there, a bit like mm. at university where it all rests on that final mark. So perhaps we, uh, and I know that some university courses do have different entry rather than ATAR, and schools are looking at different ways of bringing students in, but. Maybe we need more sort of wide wholesale um, thinking around using learning profiles, um, looking at different measurements of student learning in order to, you know, to match them to the right courses that they might want to do at university or in, in um, vocational education or elsewhere. So I think um, that conversation will continue over the next, um, you know, few years. So something that I thought this is a. Very hard question, right? We know this, right? This is one of the biggest, one very hard question we've got at the moment. Something I've put in my own teaching practice, and I'm going to challenge something here, is that it's getting the mark. Yeah. I've, I've talked to many people about this. I believe we're in the business of education, not the business of assessment. Mm -hmm. Yes. And some may agree. Assessment is a means to an end. Now, this is very hard to say to VC when the lot's riding on the line. It's hard to say to university students. What? at least in my courses I've designed for first year we try to build in, is how do we encourage the learning side, not the grading side? That if I accomplish the learning, the mark comes with it. Yeah. And that's, again, I'm not saying this is easy, we see mm -hmm. lots, of, lots of nodding heads, 
But I, what generative AI is really doing, that's what I answer to my question, is it's shining a spotlight on this focus of getting the grade. And if all, my only goal is getting the grade, then that's what right. generative AI lets me do is cheat more than ever, mm -hmm. yeah. if we're really brutally honest. So it's how do I design a whole curriculum and a course that says, as I'm learning away, am I doing a journal? In my own programming courses, we try to highlight assessments along the way, which highlight to you, am I really learning what I'm here to do so that when I get to the final presentation, the final accumulative assessment, that I've actually demonstrated I've learned the skill. AI might have helped me get there. Fantastic. I mean, from a second, from a tertiary education, if AI's helped you get there, but you can show me you've actually learned the skill, fantastic, great. But that's the, it, that's the challenge, is how do I decouple this getting the grade and the focus of the mark? Which, by the way, when I was a student, I was not for, uh, not say, I, sorry, I should say this, I wasn't cheating, but I focused on wanting to do really well on the, on the grade myself, so I understand the student motivation. The, the assessment has to include a conversation. Um, and so, you know, you can pretty quickly grasp whether the, the student has an understanding of what it is that they're talking about, the concepts that you, you're covering. Um, that, that high stakes assessment, as was articulated, will, will um, unfurl as that, that assessment takes place and the result doesn't come because they didn't know the content, because they didn't do the work, they didn't do the thinking. Um, and as, as Tembi uh, rightly points out, knowledge is the consequence of thinking and I would add experience. Uh, and when you do that, um, uh, that's when you get the, the runs on the board to be able to answer those questions in those high stakes, tedious tests that we force children to do, um, and some adults. Um, yeah, it, it's, yeah. yeah. Anyone else? No, Want to contribute? No, we're good. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I've, I've got literally 21 more questions I'm going to ask, but I'll, I'll ask them later. Um, <laughs> get off stage because we're out of time. Thank you very much to our panelists. Round of applause. Yeah. All right.